This videotape is intended to show you how to mount a four-jaw independent chuck on an engine lathe and how to true a workpiece by two methods. The chalk method and the dial indicator method. The chalk method is used for less precise alignment of work that is to be machined to smaller diameters. The chalk method must also be used when the work to be aligned has a rough finish. The dial test indicator method is used for more precise alignment of the work. The greater precision of the dial test indicator method is necessary for machining to more than one concentric diameter. After viewing this videotape, you should be able to perform the safety procedures required in every machine shop. Identify the steps for mounting a four jaw independent chuck in their proper order. Identify the steps for truing a workpiece by the chalk method. And identify the steps for truing a workpiece by the dial test indicator method. When you are in the shop, you must take some precautions that will protect you and the people around you. Always wear your safety glasses. Take off all your jewelry, such as rings and watches. Roll up your sleeves above the elbow. And make sure your clothes fit close enough so they won't get caught in the machine. There are four steps to follow in mounting a four-jaw independent chuck on a cam lock spindle nose. First, you should check the base plate of the chuck to make sure it matches the type of spindle nose on the machine. Next, to prepare the machine for mounting the chuck, you should place the spindle RPM selector in the neutral position so the spindle can be turned freely. You then turn the spindle by hand and clean the spindle nose inside and outside with a clean rag. Then, to prepare the chuck for mounting, you should place a wooden cradle block on the ways. This block protects the ways and the operator's fingers. Then place the chuck on the cradle block. Wipe the inside and outside of the chuck with a clean rag. This cleaning is required because chips caught between the chuck and the spindle nose will throw off the alignment of the chuck. Finally, turn the chuck in the cradle block so that the cams in the chuck line up with the holes in the spindle nose. Slide the chuck gently onto the spindle nose. Use a wrench to tighten the cams evenly to secure the chuck on the spindle nose. The four jaw independent chuck on a cam lock spindle nose is now secured in position. There are two other types of spindle noses in common use. The tapered and the threaded. The steps to follow in mounting chucks on these other types of spindle noses are the same as those you have already seen, except for the final step. When you are mounting a chuck on a tapered spindle nose, you must turn the chuck to align the key on the spindle with the keyway in the chuck. Place the spindle in a low RPM or lock it to prevent it from turning. Gently slide the chuck into place and tighten the threaded collar with a spanner wrench. When you are mounting a chuck on a threaded spindle nose, first tighten the belt on the cone pulley in a low RPM or lock the spindle to prevent it from turning. Then gently lift the chuck and thread it onto the spindle. Use the T-wrench to give the chuck a snap as a final tightening step. Now that the chuck is mounted, you are ready to prepare it to receive the workpiece. As you look at the chuck, you will see a set of concentric grooves which are used for rough alignment of the jaws. Select a corresponding point on each jaw and align them with a common groove.
After placing the workpiece in the chuck, use the T-wrench to move each jaw an equal distance toward the workpiece. A convenient way of measuring equal distances is to turn the T-handle the same number of times on each jaw. At this point, you will have to plan ahead to the cutting operation that you are going to perform. Calculate the RPM, assuming that the first operation will be facing. Here's the information you need to know to make the calculation. The cutting foot speed for finishing low carbon steel and the diameter, which is 1.5 inches. As the table shows, the cutting foot speed for this material is 100 surface feet per minute. So, 4 times 100 divided by 1.5 is equal to 266 RPMs. Start the machine motor. Set the RPM at 266, or as close to 266 as the machine will allow. Since you are calculating finishing RPM, go to the high side if you have to. Engage the clutch to start the spindle turning. You are now ready to learn the steps in using the chalk method for truing the workpiece. First, hold a piece of chalk like this, letting the chalk touch the high point of the workpiece. This will tell you which way to move the workpiece to align it in the chuck. Now, disengage the clutch to stop the spindle. Move the work by loosening the jaw on the low side and tightening the jaw on the high side. You should use the same number of turns on the T-handle for both loosening and tightening. Mark the jaw that was tightened. You have to know which jaw you tightened so that you are correcting the high point and not creating others. Check the other two jaws to be sure they are still tight. Wipe the chalk mark off the workpiece. Now, engage the clutch to start the machine again and repeat the process. Mark the high spot with chalk. The longer the chalk mark, the smaller the adjustment you need to true the piece. A small chalk mark indicates a larger adjustment. Disengage the clutch to stop the spindle. Loosen the jaw on the low side and tighten the jaw on the high side. Mark the jaw that was tightened and check the other two jaws to be sure they are still tight. This process is repeated until you have a continuous chalk line around the workpiece. The piece will now rotate true for cutting operations. The second method of aligning work is with the dial test indicator. You should use this method for more precise alignment of the work. The greater precision of the dial test indicator method is necessary for machining to more than one concentric diameter. Use this method only on smooth surfaces to prevent damage to the indicator. The chalk method may be used for rough alignment before using the dial test indicator for a more precise alignment. Before using the dial test indicator, you must turn the power off and place the spindle controls in the neutral position so you can safely turn the spindle by hand. To begin, secure the indicator base to the compound rest on the cross slide. You can now move the indicator gently into contact with the workpiece by using the cross feed screw. Move the indicator point into contact with the workpiece by using the cross-feed screw handle. Continue moving the indicator point into the work 
until the needle has moved approximately one half the distance it can travel around the dial face. This procedure is necessary so that the needle can move in both directions. Now, turn the outer ring of the indicator face until the needle is on the zero reading. Turn the chuck slowly by hand. When the needle is moved clockwise to its highest reading, you have found the high point of the workpiece. Stop the spindle at this point. Loosen the jaw nearest the low point and tighten the jaw nearest the high point. Remember that only small adjustments are needed to true the workpiece. You must also mark the jaw you tightened. Again, make sure the other two jaws are tight. Continue to loosen and tighten the jaws until the indicator hand stays on zero when the workpiece is rotated. The work is now precision aligned in the chuck and is ready for machining. Remove the indicator from the cross slide and put it back in its protective case. Let's review briefly the objectives of this videotape. Be safety conscious when you are in the machine shop. The four steps in mounting a four jaw independent chuck on a cam lock spindle nose are step one, match the chuck and spindle nose. Step two, Prepare the machine for mounting the chuck. Step three, prepare the chuck for mounting. Step four, slide the chuck on the spindle nose and tighten it. The four steps to follow in truing the workpiece with the chalk method are, step one, mark the high point with chalk. Step two, stop the spindle. Step three, loosen and tighten the jaws to move the high point. Step four, mark the jaw you tightened and check the other two jaws. The five steps to be followed in truing the workpiece with the dial test indicator method are, step one, Secure the indicator to the compound rest on the cross slide. Step two, move the indicator point into position against the work. Step three, turn the outer ring of the indicator face to zero the needle. Step four, turn the chuck by hand to locate the high point. Step five, loosen and tighten the jaws to remove the high point. If you have any further questions, review this tape on how to mount a four jaw independent chuck and true workpiece by the chalk method and the dial test indicator method. <laughs>